Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and I am here again in the lockdown garden. I'm going to be here for quite a while. And in this video, I want to show you some examples of telescopes, certain type of telescopes. There's a lot of different telescopes out there that you can buy and they're all for different things. Now it could be for looking at the moon or the planets, or you could be interested in looking at faint things like other galaxies, like the Andromeda galaxy that I was talking about in an earlier video. And they all have the strengths and weaknesses. So in this video, I just want to give you a bit of an introduction to the different types of telescopes there are. Now, I've only got two examples, but um, I'll show you these ones. These happen to be the most popular type of telescope. So let's have a little look at what I've got. Okay, so I have this telescope now uh, that I'm showing you now, and this is probably the most simplest telescope that you can buy. And if you have a camera, telephoto lens or anything like that, this is probably the most similar type of telescope to a camera telephoto lens. It's a refracting telescope. And this particular one is a, a pretty good one, actually. It's an 80 millimeter, which means that the aperture here is 80 millimeters. And we can see now, if we look at the front of it there, we see it has all the figures here. F6.8, that's the aperture. 545 millimeter focal length and 80 millimeters. That's the uh, the width of the, the lens on the end there. And it's also an APO and uh, APO chromatic uh, doublet telescope. So it's a pretty good uh, quality refracting telescope. Yeah, and the refracting telescope is probably the classic telescope, you know. It's the one that I think Galileo, he didn't invent the telescope, it was a Dutch person that invented the telescope. And Galileo turned this like eyeglass thing, uh, which was a refracting eyeglass to the, the moon. And he also pointed it at Jupiter. And that was when he found the, the moons going around Jupiter. And then they realized that they weren't that the Earth wasn't the center of the universe. So it was Galileo that first sort of adapted this, the eyeglass into a telescope. And uh, have you ever been to the supermarket and you've seen those big long tube things, telescopes, and they all say like 100 times magnification and all that sort of thing. Big, big long tubes, telescopes, usually about 50, 60 pound or something like that. And they've got these big planets on there, Jupiter, Saturn, and all that sort of thing. You want to try and avoid those because they're not very good try and avoid one of those cheap telescopes because really they tend to be too slow the focal lengths tend to be quite long and the aperture ratio tend to be too slow you really want to have a telescope that's more like the one i've got here yeah so this particular refractor here it's a pretty good one and it's more of a visual telescope than one that you would put a camera on it's, it's designed more to be visual but you can put a camera on it if you want to Something like this would probably cost, oh, I don't know, maybe £500. But you can get something very, very good starting at maybe £150. And also, you want to be careful of the mount it comes on as well. I've got this just on my tripod at the moment. But you want to get one with a fairly solid mount. And you'll notice that those ones from the supermarket, they have very wobbly mounts. They're horrible things. The slightest breeze and it wobbles all over the place. Yeah, so like I said, these are the simplest telescopes and they're very much like a camera lens and the light comes in here and goes straight through, comes out and focuses on whatever you've got in there, whether you've got your camera there or you've got your eyepiece here and you focus it by using these things here and you can see the tube come out there and um, you can focus it like that. And another thing as well, you might want to have a finder on there to find whatever you're looking for because sometimes it's quite hard to find things unless you've got like a finder on your telescope because tend to be quite long focal length it can be hard to find stuff so you normally have like a little finder on here and it'll have a red dot in it and you can point that to what you want to you want to see in the sky and the, the telescope should be able to you should be able to see it in the frame then and on this side here, you, you'll notice that two different knobs on this side. And this one here, this black one here is a fine tune. Can you see? If I turn the fine tune, that means you can fine tune the focus using that one there. I will do a proper video on this telescope on its own. But uh, this is you just take this off here and you put your eyepiece in there. Or you can take the whole thing off. Take the whole thing off there and you can you can insert your camera into there 
using the same kind of um, can you see there it's like a, a ring you have that attached to your camera and then you can start taking pictures of the moon or whatever okay so that's the refracting telescope a very very quick look but just to give you an idea of one of the most popular telescopes um, that there are on the market and like I say they are there are a lot of different sizes shapes and sizes and like I say you can get those ones from the supermarket with the really long focal length and they have all this blurbs on the box saying 100 times zoom and the big planets and, and really it's a bit false you're never going to see anything good out of one of those you might be able to see the moon pretty well and that's it really so i would avoid those if you can and get something like the one i've got here but now i'm going to move on to another type of telescope and probably the most popular telescope for astronomy that there is uh, that's for visual astronomy and for astrophotography and that is the newtonian reflector let's have a look at one of those now then i actually have two of these reflecting telescopes can you see here these are both newtonian reflectors named after isaac newton it was isaac newton that invented the reflecting telescope and these work quite differently to this one and i'll show you why okay so as you can see these telescopes here are not the newest telescopes they're actually ancient i own the one on the right the silver one the slightly shorter one and the one on the left actually belongs to my club okay so i'll just show you how these work now then they are quite different as i say um, they don't have a lens on the top here as you can see it's um, what they do have is a big gap here and if we look down can i angle this camera down? can you see there's a mirror at the bottom of there well that mirror there takes in all the light and it reflects it back up to this thing here which is another mirror here i don't know if you can see it there's another mirror here on an angle and what that does is that secondary mirror there puts out the uh, the light to here where the eyepiece is where you put your eyepiece or where you would put your camera and this thing here is a finder scope like i say on the other telescope i was showing you that it's important to have a finder scope so you can find things and uh, that's how a reflector works and I just want to talk about the two telescopes here. As you can see, they're quite different. This one's, the white one is longer and thinner. Well, that means that it's got a longer focal length, but at the same time, it's quite a bit slower. It's a slower telescope, which means that it lets less light in than the one on the right there. Now, I'll just go through that. I'll talk about the, um, the aperture of each telescope. So the white one, is a four foot telescope I'm, I'm using old money here just just to be a bit more simple it's a four foot telescope and it has a six inch mirror now if you divide four foot by six inches you get eight so that means that the white one is an f8 which is fairly slow you know it's, it's not it's fairly medium aperture i would say it's on the slow side for a reflector now this one here on the right hand side which is my own reflecting telescope all, although it's very very old is about three and a half foot roughly and what i've done is i've it's 40 inches it's 40 inches in length the, the mirror in this one is eight inches so 40 divided by eight gets you five so this is an f5 so this lets a lot more light in than this one in fact it's a whole it's probably a, a stop and a third faster than that one so there's another thing as well aperture is very important the, the more aperture you have the wider your you know the, the the telescope the more light that can come in yeah so the reflecting telescopes have longer focal lengths than the refractor and um, the ones i'm just showing you there have quite long focal lengths of around about a meter and a little bit more than a meter the the white one has a focal length of 120 millimeters four or, or four foot whereas the silver one my own one has a focal length of 100 millimeters or around about three and a half foot so they're quite a lot longer than a refractor and you can get closer to something uh, using a reflector like i say these are very very popular for astrophotography because they're fairly fast they let lots of light in and they can get right in on what you want to photograph the quite powerful telescope now there is another type of telescope as well which i haven't got at the moment 
which is kind of like a hybrid of the reflector and that's called a catadioptric. It's basically like a, a sort of hybrid of the reflecting telescope. I can't show you that, I'll have to see if I can get hold of one. But have you ever seen a mirror camera lens, a, a mirror lens for a camera? Well, that's what a catadioptric is like. It's, it's got a front element and it has like a little cutout in the middle with a, with a, like a little a, a mirror that reflects back through the other side, back, to, back out of the other side of the lens. If you look at a mirror lens, I'll probably show one on the screen now just to give you an idea. Uh, that's a catadioptric telescope. There's two types of those as well. There's a Schmidt Cassegrain and a Maksutov Cassegrain and they're both slightly different and they're very long focal length telescopes and they're also pretty slow as well. You're normally talking about f10 to f13 for a catadioptric telescope but they are very powerful and they are mainly used to look at planets and the moon because they're quite slow. You, you can't really look at faint stuff with them because they're too slow and unless you have a really really wide one uh, you can do. But anyway that that's my little introduction to telescopes, I hope I've given you some idea about uh, what types of telescopes there is, what are the most popular and what you can use them for. The refractor, which I showed you earlier, is great for doing wide field, visual astronomy and astrophotography. The reflector is also great for visual and astrophotography if you want to get in a bit deeper, if you want to get closer to things and the catadioptric telescopes, the Max Tutov Cassegrain and the Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes are very powerful telescopes that enable you to get further into certain objects and they are a little bit better suited towards planetary and the moon. So there you go, that's my little introductory video to telescopes and the different types of telescopes that you can get for visual and astrophotography. I hope you like it and I will be doing follow-up videos on each particular telescope just to go a bit more in depth about each one and how they work so look out for that anyway if you like the video hit the like button and also hit subscribe and tick the bell for notifications of new videos and i will see you again next time